Starscream. History. Earth following the Decepticons' interception of Optimus Prime's message, Starscream approached and landed on the planet Earth. When the Decepticons arrived on Earth, Starscream scouted an old Decepticon ship called the Harbinger that had crashed landed years back. However, he failed to record the coordinates of the crash site or find the immobilizer. In time, Megatron departed Earth to gather an army out in space, leaving Starscream in charge. Starscream spent his time sending out Decepticon grunts to search for Energon deposits and managed to set up a lucrative Energon mine in secret. Starscream, History, Earth, murdering Cliffjumper aboard the Nemesis, Starscream gazed at Energon before deeming it worthless to him before two Viacons came aboard the ship, with Autobot Cliffjumper in hand. Cliffjumper insisted to Starscream that the two had not seen each other for a while before asking where his master was. Angered, Starscream insisted he was his own master and viciously struck his hand into Cliffjumper's chest, causing the latter to bleed out Energon and collapse to the ground before dying. After murdering the latter, Starscream told the two Viacons to clean his body and its liquids off the floor. Later, Starscream tended to affairs on one of the Nemesis computers before being walked to by fellow Decepticon Soundwave, whom he addressed by name and asked what he wanted. Soundwave played to him a recording of Arky's voice during the latter's conversation with Cliffjumper shortly before his death. Starscream instantly knew it was her and expressed interest in killing her as well. Soundwave later came to Starscream after the former's last visit. Starscream asked him if he was certain Megatron was being detected, to which the former said yes. Starscream allowed him to open the space bridge for their former leader. Starscream, History, Earth Reunion with Megatron During his conversation with Megatron, he explained to the latter that during his absence and out of all the Energon mines they had uncovered, their biggest one was laying below them as he spoke. He continued by stating the Viacons had been mining without pause during his absence. As he ordered a Viacon to give him a sample, Megatron stopped him and stated that he would resume leadership of the Decepticons now that he had returned. Starscream understood and asked if he should ready the space bridge for the presumably hundreds of Decepticons he had gathered in space. Megatron explained that his army would come and showed Starscream a sample of Dark Energon. Starscream said Unicron's name in astonishment and exclaimed that legends previously stated that Dark Energon held the power to revive the dead. As Megatron asked him if he was prepared to die and serve as a test subject, he stated that his death would be unnecessary and got Megatron to turn his eyes toward Cliffjumper's corpse. As Megatron placed the shard in the deceased Autobot's chest, Starscream backed up. As the Dark Energon-fueled Cliffjumper attacked two Viacons, he rhetorically questioned Megatron if his plan was to bring Autobots back from the dead to attack the group. Following Megatron's departure from the Energon mine after slicing Cliffjumper in half, Starscream stayed and monitored the mining operation until being attacked by four of Earth's Autobots, one of which being Optimus Prime, whom he contacted Megatron about and confirmed his presence in the Autobots' assault. As Megatron ordered his evacuation, Starscream protested and stated his presence was needed in order for the Autobots not to gain control of their mining operation and claim the Energon as their own. Megatron insisted that Starscream blow the mines, which Starscream complied. As RC failed to recover Cliffjumper's body, Starscream appeared before the Autobots and taunted them before dropping a bomb in the mine and evacuating before the latter could detonate. Aboard the Nemesis, Starscream assured Megatron that he would no longer need to worry about Autobot interference, believing himself to have finally rid the Decepticons of the group. As Megatron asked for evidence regarding his supposed factual belief, Starscream reminded him that he destroyed the mine as he instructed. As Megatron insisted that Optimus Prime could not be easily destroyed as he knows that Prime always survive in every battle, Starscream suggested that he take a break from leading the Decepticons. As Megatron prepared to shove a fragment of the Dark Energon into his spark chamber, Starscream urged him not to, stating that the latter would not know what it would do to him. Starscream, History, Earth, Kidnapping Fowler as Megatron stood by himself after injecting the Dark Energon into his body, Starscream approached him. As Megatron claimed to have known what Unicron wanted him to do, Starscream asked him what he could do to assist the latter in his efforts before being told to stop graveling and to merely wait his command. As Megatron left the Nemesis, Starscream looked on and jumped as Soundwave appeared behind him before telling him that he feared Megatron had come down with a case of space madness while in orbit for so long. 
he concluded that their master had not been at sound judgment since his return and ordered Soundwave to increase their global surveillance. Soundwave instead played Starscream a recording of Megatron's previous statement before angrily ushering that he was not deaf and assuring to Soundwave that it would be in Megatron's best interest for the Decepticons to see if Optimus Prime lived. Shortly afterwards, Soundwave captured William Fowler and brought him aboard the Nemesis, where he was held captive. Starscream insisted to the latter that he had come up with a solution that would save his family the grieving of his death, providing them with the location of the Autobot base. Fowler initially stated that he was inclined to follow through, but needed to ask Starscream something first. Starscream assured the latter that he was listening and exclaimed his leadership when Fowler wanted to speak to the leader of the Decepticon ship. Starscream ordered the Viacons bring over the Energon prod and asked Fowler one more time for the location of the Autobot base. When Fowler continued to not comply, he shocked the latter with the prod and proved his theory that Energon and human systems did not mix. Starscream, History, Earth, Escaping Starscream continued to interrogate William Fowler, asking him if he realized that the Autobots had abandoned him. Starscream exclaimed that he was the only one Fowler could rely upon anymore and told him to tell him what he wanted to know as he revealed the Energon prod was still at his disposal. After the latter continued to stall, Starscream shocked him once again and smiled after doing so. He then ordered one of the Viacons presently with him uncover the commotion then currently going on aboard the Nemesis. As the interrogation continued, he was intercepted by Autobots Bumblebee and Bulkhead. As he made a comment regarding the two, RC made her presence known by lowering her gun on his head. He exclaimed that it was time that he and Fowler made their leave before being shot at maliciously by the three Autobots, whom he immediately retreated from. Megatron returned to the base and found out what Starscream did in his absence and proceeded to trounce Starscream for his disobedience and the disabling of the Nemesis, therefore delaying his plans. Starscream managed to quell his master's anger by telling him that he knows how to get his plans back on course. As it turned out, his plan was to send Soundwave down to use the giant-sized array radio telescope on Earth to set the space bridge's target. Once the bridge was properly targeted, Starscream opened it so that Megatron could throw the chunk of Dark Energon though. Starscream moved the ship back to a safe distance when the fighting on the rim of the space bridge became more intense, while imploring his master to withdraw as well. Alas, the space bridge exploded, apparently taking Megatron with it, and Starscream gave a brief eulogy before declaring himself leader and dancing in celebration and ordering the Viacons to chant his name. Starscream, History, Earth, Skyquake as Starscream viewed archived footage of Megatron's death, he concluded that the latter made a grand exit. As Soundwave approached him, Starscream issued a command for him to create an audiovisual in order for him to address the Viacons. During his broadcasted message to the Viacons, he claimed Megatron's death to be a blow to the Decepticon cause. As he delivered his speech, a Viacon asked what chance the Decepticons had of conquering Earth with Megatron gone if they couldn't do it under his command. Starscream replied by stating that he had studied for millennia under Megatron and was more than ready to lead the Decepticons to victory. After his soldiers continued to be ill-motivated, Starscream concluded to Soundwave that he would need to find warriors dedicated to taking orders. While with Soundwave, Starscream explained that during the Great War much Energon was hidden on their current location and explained that Megatron had sent several of his finest warriors to guard it. He finished by stating that the warriors now laid in stasis, waiting to be reawakened. Starscream exclaimed that Megatron searched distant space for warriors when many were there. As Soundwave could not pinpoint the stasis-laying Decepticon signal, he was both surprised and angry and exclaimed that he knew they were close. After ordering him to post the power to his sensors, Starscream succeeded in locating the stasis warrior and went off to awaken the Decepticon. His mission was a success and he succeeded in reactivated the status-induced Skyquake. As he allowed the latter to bow, Skyquake was adamant on his decision to stay loyal to Megatron. Starscream informed the latter that Megatron had perished and became annoyed by Skyquake's disbelief, wondering why everyone was having such a hard time believing. However, Optimus Prime arrived with a peace offering, exclaiming that Starscream could lead the Decepticons to a more righteous path. Starscream told the Optimus that he would be willing to consider a truce, if he were to bow before him. However, Skyquake was not easily willing to change sides and quickly struck Starscream and charged at Optimus. 
As the two fought, Starscream conversed with Soundwave over the fight. He wanted his fellow Decepticon to make sure he captured Optimus being defeated by Skyquake for future reference. However, Soundwave started to channel Megatron's life signal. As he did, Starscream initially ordered him to ignore it before choosing to investigate as Soundwave continued recording. When he arrived to the remains of the space bridge, he discovered Megatron, still alive and breathing. Initially removing the dark energon from his chest and kicking the ladder, he decided to bring him back after Laserbeak arrived. Starscream, History, Earth, Capturing Wheeljack Starscream, History, Earth, Capturing Wheeljack Starscream detected a signal from space and Soundwave intercepted communication from the ship which revealed to be Wheeljack. Starscream summons Makeshift and has him take on the form of Wheeljack while he sends Viacons to capture the real Wheeljack before the Autobots meet him. Starscream, History, Earth, Harvester with growing fear amongst the nemesis of Megatron's condition worsening, Starscream was forced to employ the help of fellow Decepticons Knockout and Breakdown, whom were viewed as experts. However, Starscream was confused when only Knockout initially showed up on the nemesis, reminding him that he had asked for both of the two before asking where Breakdown was and being explained to that he was currently tracking something. As Knockout believed Megatron to be in requirement of a laboratory assist, Starscream showed him the latter's heavily damaged and comatose body after his fight with Optimus Prime on the space bridge. After Soundwave's successful track down an image of the Harvester and Knockout confirmed it as such, Starscream told the two in Breakdown that Megatron's well-being would have to be halted as the group would turn their efforts to retrieving the Harvester. They succeeded and Starscream used the Harvester on a Viacon. As Knockout and Breakdown looked on in fear, Autobot Bulkhead arrived on the scene and was promptly being absorbed by the Harvester. While using the Harvester on the ladder, he commented on his size and believed an extended length of time was needed to absorb him fully. However, Bulkhead managed to get to the Harvester, punch Starscream in the face and cause it to implode upon being tossed into the air. Starscream, History, Earth, Dark Energon Misuse Following Megatron's beating of him, Starscream laid on Knockout's medical table. As he breathed heavily, Megatron approached him and asked him rhetorically if he was resting comfortably. Megatron informed him that despite his injuries, the Decepticon would make a rapid recovery. Starscream returned his medical report with a compliment to Megatron, detailing the speed of his wrath before the latter was surprised to see how quickly the two had changed positions and confirmed they would never do so before he walked off. Angered, Starscream removed the cords out of his chest and began to walk. As he was limping, Knockout tried to get him to rest again, in fear of his safety before Starscream claimed himself to be fine and Knockout to be that of an excellent physician. As he walked off, he came across the shard of Dark Energon that he took from Megatron's spark chamber and went to the site where Skyquake was buried. Starscream, History, Earth, Underground Starscream accompanied Megatron to an abandoned Energon mine. Starscream claimed that the mine has been striped of any Energon, but Megatron insisted to indulge him by continuing into the cave. They came at a part that still had Energon drills remained and in an attempt to make an excuse, Starscream tried to blame Soundwave of being in charge of transporting mine equipment. Megatron did not buy it and punched into a wall and extracted a hidden cache of Energon, revealing that Starscream has hoarding a supply of Energon for his personal use. Starscream tried to deny the claim, but Megatron crushed the Energon telling him not to take him as a fool revealing to Starscream that he has been aware of his transgressions from removing the Dark Energon from Megatron's chest to attempting to use that same shard to resurrect Skyquake as an undead warrior and losing an arm which has been replaced. Starscream is shocked that he knew about it and Megatron revealed that Soundwave is very competent at surveillance and the reason that Megatron kept Starscream around for so long is that he has found Starscream's tactics and failures amusing, but at last found it tiresome and predictable, hitting rock bottom. As Megatron prepares to terminate Starscream while he is begging for another chance, they both spotted RC and Jack entering the chamber. While Megatron was distracted by the intruding Autobot, Starscream fled and after Megatron was buried by the collapsing cave, Starscream was in jet mode trying to escape the tunnel but was hit by a boulder before he reached the exit. Starscream managed to dig his way out of the mine and gloated that Megatron is the one that hit rock bottom. Before he could fly off, he realizes that Megatron has survived worse and others would look for him and take away the glory that he felt should be his. 
Starscream returns follows a banging sound and believing that it was Megatron, breaking an opening with a prepared speech, only to discover it was Bulkhead and his human friend Miko trapped in the cave. Starscream entered the room and began to taunt Bulkhead and threatened Miko. Bulkhead couldn't physically move because he was holding the ceiling. Jack operating a driller, entered the room preventing Starscream from harming Miko and took her out of the room. Starscream tried to plan to use Bulkhead as a way to please Megatron, but he was greeted from behind by an armed RC and she forced him bear Bulkhead's burden. As Starscream struggled to hold the massive boulder, Megatron appeared at the entrance. Starscream tried to assure him that he returned to save Megatron and begged for mercy. Starscream, History, Earth, Departure Following his near-death experience with Megatron, Starscream claimed to have realized that he was never meant to lead, instead only to serve as a servant of Megatron. Starscream thanked Soundwave for listening and noticed Megatron talking to Arachnid, whom stated that Starscream neglected to mention something. As Starscream moved in on the two and heard of a crash site, Starscream told the two he had scouted the ship during the Decepticon's arrival on Earth and knew its coordinates by heart. As Megatron's instructed, Starscream was accompanied by Arachnid on the mission. As the two landed, Starscream criticized Arachnid's chosen vehicle mode. Starscream revealed to her that he had previously killed Cliffjumper, much to Arachnid's surprise before she revealed that she knew of Starscream's previous begging for his life when he and Megatron were alone. As Arachnid went through the files, she could not find it and questioned Starscream over it before he claimed that the information was need to know. Starscream was immediately attacked by Arachnid, who believed that Starscream was trying to make her look bad to Megatron. As Starscream called her nothing more than an opportunist, Arachnid sarcastically referred to him as one to talk. Though Starscream believed that she may have been right, he claimed to have changed and lived only to serve Megatron. However, Arachnid claimed that Starscream would not live to serve anyone if he did not reveal what he knew. During their bickering, Starscream told her the coordinates with the belief that he would be freed after doing so. However, he began to yell at Arachnid to release him after the latter started to walk off. Arachnid claimed that she would come back for him after finding her destination, if she did not get lost without him. However, as she walked, Autobots arrived. During her running and pursuit by RC, Starscream begged to be freed only to be captured by the other Autobots. As Optimus discussed ending Arachnid's life with RC, Starscream was forced ahead by Bulkhead, whom insisted that he hurry up. Starscream told the group that he would give them all of Megatron and the Decepticon's secrets. After Bulkhead asked what he wanted in return, Starscream revealed he wanted to join the Autobots. When questioned over his sudden compliance, Starscream revealed that Megatron had tried to kill him and Arachnid had left him to die and questioned why he should not expose them. Starscream was hauled off in Optimus's trailer where he was released from and left with Autobot RC while Optimus Prime and the others went off to confront Arachnid. As the two waited, Starscream concluded that he was not that evil before RC dusted him off. He brought up Megatron, whom he referred to as the true evil one. As he and RC started to relate over their disliking and even hatred of Arachnid, RC revealed that Arachnid had terminated her partner. Starscream became angered, stating that was his doing before R.C. questioned him as to whom he was referring to. However, R.C. soon realized that Starscream had killed Cliffjumper and tried to fight him. Initially hesitant, Starscream gained an upper hand on her before she attacked him with all of her might. As she prepared to finish him off, Starscream cited that she might as well as he would otherwise be killed by Megatron. He soon begged and pleaded her after discovering that she was actually going to go though with it. After escaping her wrath, Starscream regained flight and stated that he would become independent. 